Hi, my name is Fred Kruger, and I'm a volunteer with the Granite Falls Historical Museum. We have spent the last 15 years digitizing thousands of pictures and documents and newspapers, but our most challenging digitization project was that of maps, because no two vintages of maps were done to the same scale or in the same size piece of paper. It took not only digitizing the maps, but then mathematically scaling them to be exactly the same so that we can overlay them on one another and then warping them to fit modern survey coordinates. That 360 gigabytes of data, along with the tools it takes to access all of that and use them as research tools, can be quite intimidating. It's got tremendous power, but because of that power, the flexibility of the user interface is sometimes a little scary to the uninitiated. So we decided to take most of the material, make it available online with a user interface that will take you no more than five minutes to master. The URL for these online tools are quite long. So rather than try and give them to you here, I prefer to simply move to our website which has a very short and easy to remember URL, www.gfhistory.org. And from there, we can actually proceed to the online maps. The first thing to do is check the box called research. And then click on the button that corresponds to overlay historic maps of Snohomish County. There you get a word description of the various online maps we offer one of which is Explore Snohomish County, about 1910. Those are just 1910 maps with lots of pictures for you to enjoy. The one we'll cover right now is the one called Homesteads and Maps from the first 100 years of the county. If you click on that, you'll go to the online map and you need nothing but your browser to use the map. The user interface is very simple. Plus is zoom in, minus is zoom out. If you zoom in and zoom out or drag the map around to the point you no longer remember where you are, you can click on the little home button to go back to the original view. Now we have layers on here that represent the various vintages of maps. We have some detailed railroad maps that are very interesting to look at, but we also have things like homesteads, 4,500 homesteads. And if you were to click on any one of these, you see who homesteaded. Here's one, Thomas Jefferson, Homesteaded that in November 28th, 1892. He got a homestead patent number 4368. We also have items on here like county corners. Those are the early convenience stores and gas station stops that were built in the 20s, 30s, and 40s as people started to motor around the county more often. And you can click on any one of these to get a description when you see the title Keeler's Corner, for instance, in this case, click on more info, and you get a document that shows the history of it, both in pictures and in words, to describe why it, was got, why it got that name in the first place and how it's weathered over the years. For our purpose today, I would like to take a peek at some of the homesteads, use those as research tools to examine how you can use these vintage maps to track the evolution of parts of the county over time. One of the interesting towns in the county is Rome. And you'll notice in the upper right-hand side, we have something called a search bar. You can enter any address up here, the name of a place, the name of a town. I'm going to type in Robe, and you'll notice it immediately picks up Robe Washington, Robe Canyon Historic Park, Robe Menzel Road. And if we scroll down further, it says among the homesteads, it found all the R-O-B-E's, most of them are Roberts, but if we scroll down far enough, we see William Robe. If we click on that, it zooms to William Robe's homestead. On the 1910 map, you'll see Robe immediately adjacent to that. And I'm gonna point out the fact that it shows Johnson Dean Lumber Company, uh, the mill buildings, a depot, and it says PO, that's the post office. And it's the post office that generally determined where on a map the town would show up. In 1910, the post office was here and the town of Robe was here. However, in 1927, and I'm going to zoom out slightly because I know what's going to happen, I'm going to drag this back up here. You'll notice that Robe still shows in the same spot, but that mill was about to close. 
and Christian Nichols down here, who lived about a mile east of town, was the postmaster. So Christian moved the post office to his house. So by 1934, Robe showed up where Christian's house was. But that was only two years before the railroad picked up the tracks. So when the tracks disappeared, the post office still had to be accessible. So the post office moved out to the street. So if we look at newer maps, Robe shows up on what is now Mountain Loop Highway. And in 1952, it was still on Mountain Loop Highway. But in 1954, the post office closed. There were no longer enough people in the area to justify the expense of operating the post office. So if we look at maps past 1954, for instance, 1975, Robe disappeared. So you can see the evolution of the county by examining any spot in the county and dialing up the various maps across the years. I hope this gives you an idea of how you might be interested in exploring the first 100 years of Snohomish County. That said, remember how to find the maps. Simply go to our website, which is easy to find because it has a simple URL called gfhistory.org. Thank you for your time.